Hi, I'm Grant Whitehead. I've got a little problem I want to try to sort out. Occasionally, I'm working on an event where I get content that's in portrait like this. Uh, it's a killer, uh, but it happens where we have to display content, either this like 916 content in portrait, uh, or even 4.3 content that we're fitting to a 16.9 frame. And I thought it'd be cool to do some sort of live um, background filling um, template-y type thing. So I got thinking, well, maybe I can do something with the ME. And turns out you can. It's a little bit of a hack, and that's the type of thing that I love, is messing around with this type of thing. So let's have a little look here. If we were to come into an ME, let's be looking at that on program. We'll come into an ME, we, first of all, we need to change this uh, to a two layer so that we can do, we can do positioning and, uh, and particularly uh, the perspective changes on it. So first of all, let me check both of these to DDR1, which I've just, I just found this video uh, on YouTube. It's an ASUS, um, happens to be an ASUS video that is just a, um, some stock footage that's all in, in portrait. And so it's a good video to test this concept. So here, I, I played around for a long time with sort of the best way of doing some positioning um, of the layer here. So if we were to do uh, 371, so we, we're moving the frame, which are we seeing here? Yeah, so we've just moved it off, we can't even see it. Um, then we zoom it, 389.8, so you can see a little bit what's happened there. If I just move this over a little, you can see how I'm really distorting it. But I'm gonna put it back right on the edge. And then the last thing I do is I throw the perspective so that we're getting the a little, a few of the pixels on the edge of the frame. And so we've got some real, with some great distortion going on. Um, now, what we also want to do is on the, on the edge, we want to bring this into about 34%. That just brings that in, do it on both sides. Oops. Yeah, so now, what that's done is it's brought that edge right in and we're actually seeing the layer below, layer B. So you can see layer B is this layer sitting there. So now we've got this really nicely distorted, almost motion blur type thing going on. And now we just do the same thing on the other side, uh, but in reverse. So 371.2. We'll do these the same, 389.8. Uh, did I do 500 on the other one? Not sure if I blew the, yeah, actually that's the, let me just go back. I'll change this one to 500, because what it does, it maximizes the zoom. You see that? And it just takes, it takes some of the focus out of it because it's blowing it right out. So you're really just getting a few of the pixels from the center of the frame on the edge of the frame. Um, I did that, let's do that now on B. So that last thing was just, we do this opposite, 104, minus 104. And we just got to do those edges again, 34, 34. Now we've got the opposite sides of the frames all sitting there. And then the last thing we do is just use a downstream key in the ME, uh, what am I looking for, DDR1. And we just sit that on top. Obviously we just need to do the edges again as well. And I think what we can trick here a little bit is to just go 
33.7. It's worth noting that you can do two decimal places in these edges. It doesn't display there, but when you go back, it is actually operating on that two decimal places. So there you go. That gives me just a little bit of a border, but you have this really nice full frame. And it depends on the content. That it, I messed around a bit and I could move move the, the frames around a little. So depending on the content, sometimes it can be a little bit too much. But you see some of these where it just is a solid color, but it's matching, obviously, matching the color from the content. And it's simply just, it's a straight up ME. So you can just, you cut to it, fade it in, use it in your production. It just works seamlessly with a live video input. Someone hands you a, a video that they shot on their phone. You could drag that in, stick it into this template. I really like how there's content like that where you're not seeing anything there and then it jumps in when there's color on the frame, it works really nice. So you could go another step um, in advanced edition. Mm, uh, yeah, all of this could be done in standard edition, but in advanced edition, we could also put um, a custom border um, and drop shadow on that. And we're sort of getting a bit of a drop shadow effect just because of where that sits in the frame and how it's doing the perspective. Um, but uh, that's just a little tip. Let me know if you use it. I'd be really interested in to see uh, how you use that concept. Let me know if you have any ideas for any other content. I'd love to hear. Thanks. See ya.